Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at how to create a USB drive suitable for flashing the BIOS on your motherboard on MSI, ASRock, Gigabyte, etc, etc, when you don't have a USB stick available, but you do have a larger USB hard drive you could use. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're taking a look at how to create a USB drive suitable for flashing the BIOS on ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock boards, all those kinds of things that have a USB flashback button or have a MBIOS or BIOS flashing utility, which requires the use of a FAT32 formatted drive if you don't have one which is compatible or you don't have a small enough drive. Now, in this video today, we're going to be taking a look at two ways of doing it both of the which will be with some silicon power drives I've got here, one of which is an NVMe style drive, like a USB style drive in a caddy, that's a portable SSD. On that one, we've actually got some data on already, which we don't want to lose, so we need to actually shrink the partition and then create a new FAT32 partition on the same drive, so we don't erase any data. And on the other drive I've got here to hand, is a, another silicon power. This is an older armor drive, which is just basically a blank drive, but we need to format it and make it smaller because currently it's a one terabyte, I believe it is. So we're gonna to need to shrink that down to a format suitable to be able to use the FAT32 file system. So I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna plug in, first of all, the one with data actually on. So there we go, this is a drive and it's got some Steam apps on there, which is basically our Steam library. So we don't wanna to have to erase that. And you may be in a similar situation where you've got a drive, but you've actually got data on it. You've got nowhere else to transfer it. So you just need to be able to create a FAT32 drive for your BIOS. So what we wanna do is to right click on the start flag and we're gonna go into disk management. And in disk management, we'll be able to see all of our drives. Let's just stretch this out a little bit more. So we've got a little bit more real estate there. So as you can see, our bottom drive here, SPPC60, which is currently listed as our D drive, is a simple drive with a NTFS file system. So this is this one here, disk number one, basic disk online, and it's showing the full capacity. Now we can't format this drive to FAT32 in its current state because it's just far too large. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is, first of all, we're gonna to wanna to shrink the partition as much as we possibly can, and then we're gonna create a new FAT32 compatible partition or drive within the drive itself. So let's start off first of all, we're gonna right click and we're gonna choose shrink volume. And Windows will query the drive to see what it can actually shrink it to. For this particular purpose, you might as well just do it to the full amount that it says there. You can if you want to, of course, you can change this setting depending on your drive. Essentially, all we need to do, we need to have a minimum of 32 megabytes available for our BIOS flash, or at least that is the size that most BIOS flashes are these days, either 16 megabytes or 32 megabytes. So as long as you've got enough room to maybe make a, maybe a one gigabyte size drive, that's gonna be absolutely fine. So anyway, let's go ahead and shrink this drive. So we'll click on shrink. This will take a little while and there we go. So currently it shrunk it down. We weren't using a great deal of space, but now we've got 777.31 gigabytes of unallocated space. So what we can do here is we can create a new simple volume and then you get the new simple volume wizard come up. We'll just click on next. So now we need to choose a size. Now, in theory, we can have this up to 32 gigabytes, which is FAT32's limit. But we don't necessarily need it that big. We only want to use it temporarily. So I would just say, put in something like 1024. That's absolutely fine. We only need 32 megabytes. So 1024 is going to be absolutely fine. So then we'll click on next. And it will ask to provide a drive letter. So I'm going to try Z because I know I don't have a drive Z on my system, or at least I'm pretty sure I don't. Click on next, and this is the important bit. So it's going to say now, format this volume with the following settings. Now clearly, the file system, we don't want NTFS, we want FAT32. The allocation unit size, we can set to default, that's fine. And volume label, we want to remove the volume label. That's pretty important with these BIOS flashes. They don't like having a volume label on the drives for some reason. So then we've got the option to perform a quick format, which we're happy to do. So all we need to do is click next. 
and it gives you an idea of what is going to be happening next. So click on finish and there we go. So local disk Z, that is our new drive. And as you can see, it's shown up there as one gigabyte FAT32. So we can now quite easily download a BIOS file, put it onto the FAT32 partition on this drive, plug it into our motherboard, and then we can flash the BIOS. Now, some particular boards may not like the fact that there is still an NTFS partition on here, which if that is the case, then you're going to have to go to the point of actually erasing the whole disk, which is what we're going to do on the next drive. So I'm going to eject this drive. And we're going to eject our PC60. And there we go, that's been removed. Physically unplug the drive. And next we're going to plug in our silicon power armor drive. So there we go, it's come up as local drive D. It's actually empty at the moment, so that's excellent. And this one is actually XFAT. So XFAT is a slightly unusual file system which basically works with FAT32 but is essentially extended FAT. But sadly this isn't compatible with doing bar flashes. We do need to be FAT32 nothing else nothing else will work it's got to be fat 32 although saying that some motherboards will get away with fat 16 or just even fat but realistically fat 32 is the one that you want to try so what we're going to do this drive has no data on it so we can completely remove the partition so we're going to go here and delete volume and you'll get the warning come up saying deleting this volume will erase all data on it back up any data you want to keep before deleting do you want to continue yes we do and there we go. So now we've got our one terabyte drive, or just shy of one terabyte drive, which is unallocated. So what we want to do is do right click, same principle as before, and we're going to choose a new simple volume and put a size in. So we'll do a little bit bigger this time. So we'll do two gigabytes. Choose next. We'll give it the same drive letter Z because we've ejected the other drive, so that's fine. And again, we want to change it from NTFS to FAT32. That is the important part of this whole thing. And also, we're going to remove the volume label because we don't want a volume label on our drive. And also, we're going to perform a quick format. So click on Next. And again, it runs down and tells you what it's going to do. Click on Finish. And a few seconds later, there we go. Boom, there is our local disk Z, which is our 2 gigabyte drive. So we can quite easily put a 32 megabyte file on there to flash our BIOS. Again, it is going to come down to whether or not the drives are actually recognized by the system. It's all well and good them being FAT32 and having the right BIOS file and all that kind of stuff. But for some motherboards, there just is that compatibility issue. But if you're in a certain fix and you don't have any other drives available, then this is always useful for those last ditch attempts. Or even if you want to use this video just as a means of actually repartitioning your own drives. If you want to make a couple of different drive letters on a drive, then this is definitely a way of going ahead and doing that. So there we go, there is how to create a FAT32 partition on an existing drive, uh, with both with data and without data. If you've got any comments or questions, feel free to let me know in the comments section. We're looking forward to your comments. But for now, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you guys in the very next video. Thanks for watching.